Hey. How are you? Oh, it's so good to see you. I'm glad we could catch up today. Hope you haven't been waiting Not long. Not too long. In a town that loves power lunching, it's always about who you're with and where you're going. Oh, I love it here. I'm talking to the leading minds on energy and giving you a taste of DC. I was just staring at all the really yummy yeah. treats. I'm Monica Trousey, and this is Off the Menu. How are you? It's so nice excited to be here. Great to be yeah, here. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Have you I been really here before? before? I've been here just the night it opened, okay. and I've been excited about coming back again. We're so going to have a good chance. lunch today. Well, thank you yeah. so much. Let's go upstairs. When you write about energy, what are the topics that you tend to write well, about? I am interested in the fact that 10 or 15 years from now, we have to have a different energy mix than we have today. Um, and whether that is through, we're gonna have a lot more automation built in, we're gonna have sensors, the efficiency is going to be built into our urban spaces in a way we're not used to. So when you think about the energy demands of that, while there'll be a lot more energy used, we need to begin thinking about what that future infrastructure needs to look like, what, what it needs to bear, what resilience you need to build, what do we need to do on the cyber and security front to make it safe. I think about, climate and energy and how when I started as a journalist 14 years ago covering these issues it was it all was very new to people the conversations were new people weren't comfortable necessarily talking about climate change there was still a debate about whether climate change was real we're obviously in a very different place now do you think that in the 2020 elections we'll see climate and energy playing a bigger role I think the Democrats have grabbed, you know, grabbed sustainability and, and, and environmentalism and you know, smart new energy bets for the future um, as part of the platform they want to, to bring to this. A lot of Republican business leaders, and I say business leaders in general in the energy area, have already made the jump you know, looking at how do we create greater efficiencies, you know, less coal and fossil fuels in the system, how do you begin to bring those down? So if you were moderating one of the debates, ahead of the 2020 elections. What's the one? Maybe end? I will. <laughs> Maybe you will, and that'll be amazing. Um, hopefully we can co-moderate. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the one energy question you would ask the candidates? I would ask, I would ask them a simple question. What is the mathematical formula when you look at the energy, you know, the portions of energy direction that we have on how you achieve the climate goals that we have, yeah. how you get the emission reductions below the 2% level, and what does that mathematical equation look like? Yeah. You know, how much of it is solar? How much of it is bio? How much of it is new renewables? What other, you know, things do you have up your sleeve? How much of it is nuclear? Um, or how much of it is coal? Lay, lay that picture out. Because until you have that picture, then we are kind of hijacked by fads. You were telling me earlier that um, you think that nuclear needs to be a part of the solution when we're talking about reducing emissions and our clean energy future. I think this frustrates a lot of my environmental friends that though they they need to know and I have always been there is that the nuclear energy has got to be part of that equation yeah. and that's why I've been so interested in the innovation in the nuclear sector in which there's a lot and I actually don't think the media has done a good job of telling that story. Yeah. The folks that you've interviewed it's kind of like a list of the who's who. Um, in D.C., but right. also internationally. Do you have a favorite? I liked Ernie Moniz, who used to be a secretary of energy. Yeah. Not, you know, I know that you're in the energy area, but I'll tell you why I liked him is because he runs a soccer camp and he has a soccer team. And so finding these little stories behind the kind of grand visage or the sphinx, or, you know, something about, about them. So and I got to say, Afashina is just oh. killing it with this calamari. Outstanding. And Everything is, yeah, the calamari, this pasta is awesome. Um, and then there's a market downstairs too. The meat always looks fantastic. Wow. So if you really, like, if you are having people over and you're looking for a great steak or something to cook, this is a good place to come and buy. So that will never happen. Oh, do you <clears> not cook? Um, I enjoy the cooking of others. Mm. I will tell you my biggest, darkest secret here on, on, on live camera. Um, 
when I'm all at home and on my own, I mean, this is going to offend every chef who, who may watch this. What I do is I eat a, a can of Lasur green peas and a can of tuna. Out of the can. Is it, no, and I love it. I mean, it's just become my sort of yeah. my sort of um, yeah. special thing. I think the president is jealous of the food we're having right now. <laughs> he should come join us. 